Okay, so the equipment side of the starter, do you need to buy extra stuff? I don't think so. I think most home brewers would have everything handy. Uh, if you're just starting out, yes, maybe then you would purchase something. But the basis would be like brewing, like I said, water, sugars and yeast. Now here you would need a container, like you would need a container for your brew. And uh, depending on which method you're using, in my case, I'm doing the DME one, so I need to boil, so you're going to need a pot. Everybody should have a pot, I suppose. Uh, heat source, I'm just going to use gas in this instance. And then the, the vessel at the end, I'm using a, a two liter Elmira's flask. Uh, it doesn't have to be this. What I love about these ones is you can actually make your starter or start your DME process in this. This is a laboratory grade glass so it can take heat and then go to a, a cold source. What we're going to do, we're going to boil the DME and then introduce it into a ice bath. So with these flasks you can do it and it won't break, it won't chip. You won't want to do that with normal glass in your house though. So you can't do it on heat and then to gold the glass will crack if it finds a weak spot. So this is uh, uh, suitable for that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to boil the DME in water in a pot and then cool it and then introduce it into the flask and then add my uh, yeast to that. I made a homemade uh, stir bar, magnetic stir bar thingy. You can buy those, they're quite expensive though, that's why I made my own, but it's not a necessity. Uh, you can basically swirl it, because now you need to introduce oxygen for the yeast to work in this yeast starter, and then leave it, it just needs to be covered so there's not wild yeast coming in or infection coming into your or starter because it's just like you brew it's just in, in a small scale you don't want any infections in there and then leave it and just make a mental note when you pass there just swirl it introduce some more oxygen there and that's what the stir plate and the stir bar now does for me lazy me so it just continuously spinning and introducing air into my starter uh, like I said, not a necessity. I, I built this one and uh, so I use it. So it's going to be a pot where you boil in a uh, thermostat to get your temperature. You don't want to add your yeast to uh, boiling hot or too hot uh, of a liquid and it will basically kill them and that's not the purpose of starter. Health. Remember health, we don't want to kill our yeast. So a thermostat to measure the temperature. Uh, that's about that and, and, and your yeast. So it's not a, a special amount of stuff you're going to need to have. You're supposed to have everything you need to make a yeast starter. If you don't have a, a cap for this, I have those foam caps you put in there or I have a, a special one that goes over there that just stops anything from getting in. But if you don't have that, you can just put foil over. Most people put foil over. I've seen some of the people put rubber gloves on there with a, a, a rubber band to keep it tight. Uh, it's, it's, it's really not uh, science if you know brewing and you know how to be sterile around your, your brew and, and keep it safe. Same applies to doing a healthy yeast starter. Okay, so let's get the real process started. First off, you need to rehydrate the brewer. Very important step, and you continuously do that like you're hydrating your yeast as well. Okay, no, everything should be sterilized. Mine was already in in the process so it should be this is just for measuring so in this I would do my liter of liquid but remember I said there would be boil off so I would say 1.2 if you're doing a liter 
and 1.7 if you or 1.8 if you do uh, 1.5 batch Okay, so that's our liter. It will go in there. Nice and clean. Okay, as you see, put that one there. Let's create some fire. Now, the thing with DME is it actually dissolves somewhat better in a low to moderate heat if it's boiling and going crazy it will actually clump together and that would make your process a lot harder you can still get it done you're just going to need to do more work so seeing we did a a, a liter there just going to measure out our dme Okay, I forgot to mention, while well, you're measuring stuff, so you actually need a, a kitchen scale as well, otherwise it doesn't help you have the formula that you can't measure it. Okay, so with our liter we're doing 100 grams, so I'm at 109 oddish, so that would be fine. Then just get your sterilized, although when we're boiling this, spoiling would actually kill any living organism, so, but out of habit we're doing sterile everything. Just stir it so it basically gets mixed, see if there's any clumps, try to dissolve it. My burner is currently at a very low temperature for me just to not get excessive uh, hot liquid and make the clumps difficult. I do love the smell of malt. Okay, so just going to get this to a boil. Uh, it's going to, if if all your malt or your DME is dissolved and you get it up to a proper boil, I would say about 10 minutes, maximum 15 minutes. Because remember, this is not a full brew. Uh, the DME is already an extract of someone that did a, a full brew so you don't have to go like in 60 minutes like we do a full grain this is 10 minutes just to get it hot enough and then we need to get it in the ice bath so we can get the temperature down low enough to pitch our yeast but that is the other thing if you're doing it like my method you would need like a funnel to pour it in or you can do it by eye if you want to you're going to waste I suspect I do it with a funnel and you would need some place where either the sink is good you can put the cold water in there with some ice around it I'm just doing a small basin out here because I'm doing the video outside and uh, so actually the list, uh, the list continues And remember to check it, this stuff can really foam up quickly on you if it uh, is dissolved properly and uh, it's at maximum heat and you need to stir it because if you're dealing with a gas flame like I'm dealing or even on an electric stove or any heat source, it will scorch or, or burn where it, the, the malt actually makes contact with your heat source.
Need more power, Scotty. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Like I said, just keep an eye on this constantly. Even if I do this, it might boil in the background. So yeah, but it's not that hot yet. But I've seen when I do it in, in the flask that it's seconds. It just makes a slight foam on top and you look and you look at your phone or something and boom. There it is. So I'm just going to run a timer for 10 minutes. But you can guess this with your eye as well. I mean, if it starts foaming up, just like turn it down so it doesn't go over, boil over, and then uh, it should be good. I mean, like I said, this is already an extract from a full brew that someone did. And, uh, it's already done. We just need to get it to boil and then cool it down. <sighs> Life of a brewer. It's good. Just commentating on what is happening in the stadium. There's a lot of activity happening here. We're having the yellow team in the lead here. Really bubbling up. Some aggravating fighting there. Don't know. You don't want to see all that, do you? One eternity later. Okay, so one eye there, one eye there. But this is basically done. And also that is saying it's done. Now the process is you would while cooling this down, if you go to your sink, cover it up. If it was in the flask, cover the flask up. Then dunk it in the ice bath. Uh, that is actually why I keep this lid handy. So I put it on here and then I do the, the cold bath. Another key ingredient would be a thermostat of sorts. So you get your temperature right. Now what would be the right temperature? Normally when you pitch your yeast in a, a brew, the ale's normally 25 degrees, uh, lagers a bit lower. Uh, so for your yeast starter, I tend to pitch it a bit higher, like 30, 30 odd degrees. I would be aiming to get this down to 33, 35 maybe. A few seconds later and doing all the transfer, you'd also lose some of the heat there. So when it's in the flask, we should be at 30. So the reason for covering your flask or covering the pot is you don't need infections in this now because this is very susceptible to wild yeast or anything in the air getting into your brew and what was the key word health we need health man we need health in our yeast so we don't need to put it in an environment that's already having some bad dudes in there wanting to kill our yeast one eternity later so we got our baby back from the deep cold depth of its ice bath and it's at 35 currently. So just removing this, getting our funnel from our sterilizer. Remember, don't be scared of the foam. It's good. Now we can just add this. Go back into the sterilizing liquid. She's at 30 now. That's, that's also cold environment now. So with 
is going to sterilize even the packet because uh, in the inside you're dealing with foil basically but it's the way I've been taught sterilize is a sterilize yeast packet shake it down cut that puppy open That's all of our zombie yeast. Now because we are dealing with zombie yeast, I'm going to go a step further. We had the basic where it was water, sugars and your yeast and then there was the enhanced basic where you added a yeast nutrient. Now with DME you don't need to do that. That's enough food for your yeast to grow in there. But seeing I'm dealing with a zombie yeast, a yeast that has expired four years ago, I'm going to add a yeast nutrient to this as well. My weapon of choice is DAP, a diammonium phosphate. I've added a little bit into here. I've turned on the stir plate and it's creating a nice and slow typhoon in there and we, we're going. Going very nicely, We're still doing our thing here and uh, going to move this in a while also inside where I can control the heat because it will cool down now. It's currently moving into winter in South Africa so it's going to go cold if I leave it outside. So I have put in the, the foam stopper, nothing can get in but uh, the CO2 that the yeast will release if our zombie heat comes alive is going to escape and uh, that's what you want. You want it to release the, the gas but uh, nothing gets in your mini brew, your good yeast healthy starter. So Now this process, like I said, could be anything from 12 hours actually as short but Normally it's a day to about two days, so you need to take that in account when you're doing your brew so that you start earlier with your yeast starter and you don't just start with it when you start brewing your day because it's not going to be ready in an hour. So I'm doing my brew basically in two days time. If this is ready tomorrow and we're ready to go, then I can pre-launch my brew day as well. So it's going to all depend on our puppy inside here yeah, and if it's healthy, if it does come from the dead then uh, yeah, we're going to brew if it. If it doesn't do anything after two days I'm going to call defeat on my challenge and uh, get a proper yeast and get it going in there. So thank you guys for watching. That's the basis of a yeast starter. It's not that difficult. Like I said, if you're already brewing, you already actually made a lot of yeast starters in all your brews because that is just a, a bigger yeast starter. Now we're just doing it on a small scale. So give it a try guys. If you're doing with liquid yeast, it's very nice for liquid yeast. Uh, if you need a little bit more yeast in your brew, if you're dealing with high uh, gravity beers, don't overstress that yeast man, get a good flavor profile at the end, just introduce a little bit more yeast. If you don't like yeast starters then like I said just pitch two of those smack packs or two uh, liquid yeast vials. Normally the packets are sufficient but uh, there is a calculator in some of the brew uh, apps like Beersmith at Hazard where it shows you actually what you need precisely for the beer recipe you're doing. It can tell you the water, the amount of DME you should use. It's actually a very nice program. I don't have it. I use some of the free apps that's available but I also know uh, how to calculate 
one gram to 10 milliliters and I do a basic uh, starter like you saw now. It's not that difficult. Stir bars going. We have a nice cyclone in there. It's very good. And uh, I see you when we are pitching this. Hopefully. Thumbs up. Come on, guys. Hit that high like button there. Let's save this uh, zombie. Uh, if it's not going to do it. Okay. Chucking it then. But yes, for hoping. Day two. Welcome back, guys. Nice play here again. So, our zombie yeast actually worked out. So, someone said, now nah, I should call it Frankenstein yeast. But it's almost finished. There's a very beautiful yeast cake at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. I don't want to stir it up too much. There's still some yeast going on in here. Just going to leave it for today still. And then I'm going to cold crash it basically. Put it in a fridge. Uh, so all the yeast that's in suspension currently drop down to that yeast cake. So then I can basically decant the liquid off. And I'm going to use that in a, a different brew. Uh, the yeast is alive, it is active, so that's basically that for yeast starter, so like I said, I do it for all my brews, so if I'm really, really, really pushed, I'll still just rehydrate the yeast, which is a easier process if you're dealing with nice, healthy yeast, just put a, if it's a dry packet of yeast, just put that into a, uh, liquid and uh, give the yeast something to just like quench the thirst before they get to work in your brew it's not necessary i do the starter from push for time i'll just rehydrate the yeast before i put it in my brew so uh, if you want to see how this one is going to go it's going to be like an easy ipa with a more citrusy flavor to it i have a, a big one in the fermenting already here it's like a, but that one would be more like a piney IPA so stay tuned for that if you want to see it so thanks guys for watching if there's any questions on yeast uh, starters or rehydration of yeast or any yeast topic in general just pop me a comment down below and uh, I'll get back to you uh, if you like what you see just like please we need uh, subscriptions there and uh, also likes to just Get this channel flowing, bro. Enjoy the brewing, guys. Thank you.